am a huge fan of Drew Holiday on many levels, all the work that he does in the community and with his wife and with his family and um, not to mention everything that he does on the court. But I agree with you in that the money thing doesn't make sense, particularly how much they have invested in their top three at the moment, the Celtics and Jason, Jalen, and now Kristaps. And not to mention that he can opt out after next year. So I, I am I am one for putting all of your chips in, but I think that, and I do believe that the Celtics will do their due diligence and go after Drew Holiday if it's at the right price. But I, I would imagine that the Celtics price is very different from what this bidding war is going to turn into. The thing about it, if they do require Drew, is it goes against everything that we have been told all off season. And that is, this is Jason and Jalen's team. They need to step up into those leadership roles. They need to be the ones on the floor, directing traffic, calling plays, being the guys with the ball in their hands. And this is their team. And we have seen repeatedly what happens and it's to no one's fault, but you brought in Kemba Walker, who is, who was as deferential as a former all-star could be at the point guard mm -hmm. position. And it was still too much. Marcus Smart was named starting point guard. And apparently it was still too much. They want the Jays to be the guys. They are the guys. And now it is their time to take that mantle for this franchise and run with it and get to banner number 18. The CLNS Media Network is powered by FanDuel. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So, a few things. Uh, I feel... Well, one, Ev, I mean, you would know you do these shows every single week with me and, and Abby. I'm sure we've had some of these conversations as well over the course of the offseason. But I, I just feel honestly a little bit vindicated in the sense that I have been saying for months, for months, that the Celtics are still looking to trade Malcolm Brogdon and still more than open to the idea, if not outright dangling him. Doesn't mean he's going to get traded, but the fact that all of these reports, again, Himmelsbach, Windhorst, you name it, the fact that all of this is happening, like I haven't been making it up, folks. Malcolm Brogdon is no sure thing to be here come media day or come mid-training camp or come opening night or certainly mid-season. This is a whole other conversation. The Celtics could be looking to you know, move him in picks for some sort of a trade deadline upgrade. But that's that's not the same thing. You know, I'm talking about the here and now he could absolutely be moved. The other part of this, which is, well, sort of goes in series. I've said, if you're going to trade Brogdon, you're going to do it for a guard. Who's it going to be? Well, Drew Holiday is suddenly available. We didn't know that he was going to be. And the other part of this, and Ev, I have said this ever since the moment Market Smart was traded, and I got a lot of pushback from you and from others about this. I am not certain that Brad Stevens and company, that front office, is sold on Derek White's starting point guard. I think they love Derek White, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they are sold on him being the starting point guard for this team, which again, just adds another layer of credence to the possibility that they could go out and acquire a Drew Holiday. As far as whether or not they do this, I think that some of what Abby just hit on is, is uh, you know, bringing up the, the potential opt-out 100%, in the, that what that tells me is that if in fact a move happens and i'm not even saying it's likely but if in fact a move happens i think you're looking at brogdon you're looking at horford and i know horford's a fan favorite he's an internal leader and all of that he's you know great just a guy you want on your team no doubt about it but when you start to think about the contracts and age and you know protections for rob williams going forward the fact that holiday can go you want to protect yourself as much as you can and you want to have rob under contract Horford, contract's coming up, and hell, he could come back and re-sign again if he wanted to. And so, you know, if you're if you're looking at that potential opt-out situation with the Drew Holiday, you can kind of recoup in that lane going forward. It's just another thing, another, you know, part of this to consider. I just wonder if, in fact, you know, to, to I don't know, put, put a little bow on this, Abby, I, I wonder how satisfied the front office is with the makeup of this roster that is absolutely a championship caliber roster but do they feel the need to respond to what the bucks just did to where they now all due respect to the jays it is now the bucks that have the best one-two punch in the entire nba i my response to that is i think that uh, this front office 
led by Brad Stevens over the past two seasons, has shown they are not afraid to tinker, to make moves. We saw deals at the deadline with Derek White two years ago. Um, and I agree with you in that no one on this roster, aside from Jason Tatum and now Jalen Brown, due to his contract, is untouchable. And so I I think that, and, and Brad said this when he was speaking to Gary Washburn, that there's no question when you are the Boston Celtics, there is a sense of urgency every season. Their only goal is to win championships. And, and I believe that Brad Stevens is going to do what he believes is necessary to do that. And, and he's not going to, and it's not that you don't care about people's feelings or that he's worried about how Malcolm Brogdon feels and how he's going to play. It's that you need to do what's best for your team. Bill Belichick says it all the time. I make decisions based on what is best for my team. And I believe that that's what Brad Stevens is doing and the mentality that he has. And he's not going to operate out of fear or intimidation from what is going on on the outside. Well, to your point about the emotion, I mean, he traded Kemba Walker, who you know, is just on a personal level, I'm sure he didn't want to do. He traded Marcus Smart, which again, I'm sure on a personal level, he didn't want to do. I don't think Malcolm Brogdon next to those two guys is is going to give him any pause. I do think Al Horford is one of his guys, though. Yeah, so absolutely. That would... I do want to push back on this this trade idea, Cop, because we've talked about, again, the lack of big man depth. What is, what is your solution there? If yeah. you're going to go trade for Drew Holiday and you're going to sure. you're going to trade away Al Horford, what is your solution to that problem? Because there's not a lot of big guys walking around here. It's just the, the, it's slim pickings at this point. What you can't again? How many times have we said on this show that it's risky to even go into this season with those three guys? With the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Head to factormeals.com slash newsfeed50 and use code newsfeed50 to get 50% off. That's code newsfeed50 at factormeals.com slash newsfeed50 to get 50% off.